Hello, nurse. Wait, this is Total Spot Fest, but we got a kick ass show for you. We got holy freaking dynamite, Batman. We also have NXT's go home show before TakeOver 36. This is Total Spot Fest. And welcome to, or welcome back to, Total Spot Fest. I am JJ Brownlee. He is Jamie Faulkner. We are here to talk about AEW. Last night was dynamite in the buildup for All Out. So we're going to get all into it. A lot of of good stuff from last night. A lot of interesting things, too, I'll say. 100%. Like... A lot of foundational pieces were set, and I think a possible swerve is coming at us. I'm I'm holding true on I mean, my there, Mark Shardamas. We'll, we'll 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 get into it because there's definitely some there's definitely some branches of uh, of prediction I think that can can stem from the past week, especially with last night too. So uh, we're gonna get into it. We'll talk real quick about uh, impact about some developing uh, romantic news that uh, has transpired uh, through Impact, or not Impact, NXT. I've been saying Impact like all in preparation. I keep calling each show Impact. I'm, it's a great show, and I'm excited to see Emergence this Friday you know, after I watch uh, Rampage. But it's just like, I can't. NXT. I meant to say NXT. 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 Jesus, JJ, get, get your shit together. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's the next thing that Vince McMahon is going to destroy. NXT. It's, it's yes, it's 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 on the chopping block. But uh, before we get to that, thank you guys. We do appreciate. It. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. If you're listening, if you're watching us on YouTube, as always, drop a comment down below if you want to join the conversation. While you're down there, feel free to to, to just smash on that old uh, thumbs up like button. Uh, you can also clobber the subscribe button if you so desire. If you're wa- listening to us on your favorite podcast provider, just give us a shout on Twitter at Total Spot Fest to join the conversation. Uh, quick little housekeeping note we amazingly still have our two extra tickets to journey pros uh weekend at journey show coming up on the 28th uh so which is amazing because that show is stacked i'm i'm ridiculous stupefied i think walter hit the nail on the head if you haven't if you haven't heard last our last episode which was a long one i know this one will not be that long i promise uh but we had we had we had a full interview with walter along with a full show so it was a long one but we did an interview with walter from journey pro and he said that it's kind of tough to like build excitement for a show that you've already sold out it's like um here's some more stuff about matches you know it's like what do you do now you don't really you know so i think that that honest to god james i think that might have something to play with it so Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. if we don't hear anything from over this upcoming weekend we're probably gonna get in touch with walter and, and dj and get them returned so they can push them out maybe they might have a better chance selling them or giving it away to a corporate partner or god knows what else so um i know that they're doing a vaccine drive at, at the at the show as well so uh if you're coming absolutely if you're coming you haven't been vaccine vaccinated do that don't be an idiot get vaccinated um and maybe even you know i'm just spitballing here if you wit- listen walter uh dj uh, maybe do a giveaway you haven't you haven't been able to get tickets come on by get vaccinated maybe get entered in a little raffle to get tickets to the show that'd be cool that would be cool because everybody I, I'm I know there's some anti-vaxxers out there, but get vaccinated. I, I'm just going to say it now. I had a near and dear friend lose her son who was under the age of 30 to covid mm-hmm. just last week. Like get vaccinated, people like yep. it's not it's not worth it. That's all I got to say. This is not a political thing. This is a science thing. Anybody trying to make it political, fuck you, first of all. Yeah. I Just think we've vaccinated. proven multiple times that we're not political on here. We, yeah, we, 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 try, we stay away from any politics, and that's why we're talking about getting vaccinated, because it's not a political goddamn issue. So You, you know, um, maybe, maybe we can do something with Jeremy Wyatt, and you know, maybe if they have so many people come out and vaccinate, he'll actually do a line tamer. <laughs> have you have you tweeted at Lone Star yet to do a line tamer? 
no, no, I'm holding off until the week of the show to really build it up. Because I, I, I just tweeted at Jeremy Wyatt today because he's like, you know, 33 and counting. I'm like, well, we want him to get 34 as long as he does a damn line tamer. <laughs> I'm just waiting for his response. I'm assuming it's going to be no. It's going to be just but... all, all he's done is a simple one word reply to Jamie every time. No, which no. is perfect. I, I love it. It is. It is. It's Extensive. everything I want with it. Yes. <laughs> All right, so long-term story storytelling, ladies this and gentlemen. Is, this, is, this, is, this is this is this is this is this is a total spa fest version of long term storytelling. So, uh, we'll get into it. Uh, much like w- Ric Flair gets into uh, his but his train rides uh, momentarily here. So, so so we're gonna roll up a unknown woman <laughs> into a small package. I mean, it, it, we were we were talking about this earlier today, and the, the part that gets me first of all, I, it, if that is Ric Flair, which I, it sure as shit looks like it, right? It mm-hmm. kind of, you know, looking at the looking at the hand of the woman, looking trying to see if there's a there's, there's a little tattoo I can't quite make out on her leg, right? You know, whatever. But he he got remarried a couple of years back. I, I don't know which number wife this is, but uh, she's like in her fifties, I think, or so, something like that. Yeah. You know, yeah. which is definitely younger than Ric Flair, but oh yeah, no, no spring chicken. So um, so this isn't like a this isn't some like twenty eighteen to twenty you know one year old that he's he's rolled over, but. The part that gets me, the part that I said that I don't, uh, 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 was it's Ric Flair, and this is a, this is a train. I don't see Ric Flair taking public transportation. You know, maybe, I mean, maybe he's no longer the limousine ride. Maybe he's just the locomotive I ride. Don't, I don't know. Funny thing is, there are probably uh, pictures of involving Ric Flair in a train that exist out there. Uh, they're about 35 years old, and they're mm-hmm. So I'm just saying. Let's move on before we get we delve further into the depths of whateverness. So uh, we're going to talk about uh, Dynamite from last night shortly. Okay, that is our bread and butter. That's why everybody's here. Uh, in the meantime, we do want to make a little note about NXT because it did happen this past Tuesday. Uh, in case you were wondering, this was the go home show for uh, t- uh, Takeover that's happening this Sunday. So NXT, I think I, I think I'm mixing up here. So yeah, the NXT show was this past Tuesday. I think I said NXT Takeover was this past Tuesday. Not right. Not right. I mean, it's the go home for Takeover. I don't know why I'm scatterbrained today. I just I'm just gonna say the wrong thing all night. So their go home show. Oh, it, it, the numbers came out today, yesterday, and they drew 654, 654,000. That is down 13%, nearly 100,000 from the week before. 100,000. They basically almost lost impact. More or less. Maybe maybe that's why I got impact on the mind. I don't know. Um I honestly don't know. I can't, I can't. I can't fathom why that is. It just. It's like okay, sure. I mean, we know the whole thing with USA, right? While they were off USA, they were on Sci-Fi. So the numbers were okay. We get that Olympics, sure, right? But then they bounced back, and they actually went a little bit above what they were averaging before, and now they're back. This is the same numbers they had back in July, and when they're in the sixes. So, I feel. I feel dip. like. I think what happened was. See, what happened was last week's show, not this week's, but last week's was a turd and 750,000 people watched it and it was just not a good show. Right. And they're like, oh, Vince has already got his hands in it. Vince has already messed it up. I don't want to do up. this anymore. Yep. Which I, I, that's what I think. My prediction still is like this whole like change is supposed to, is going to happen after TakeOver. I did read an article earlier today speaking of NXT that said that the USA Network is not happy with a the direction that it's rumored they're going to be going with NXT. B they are very not unhappy with the cuts, and C they are flat out fucking pissed off for a recorded show. Uh, a a a, uh, a a network a network contact unnamed network contact was speaking to. I think it was Brian Alvarez or some of the Fightful Select. I don't remember who it was exactly. It was a pretty reputable, reputable uh, dirt sheet, though. Uh, yeah. But an unnamed network contact said, "We didn't pay the money we paid for a freaking uh, or for a fucking pre-taped show." I think is what the quote was. We paid for a live show. 
So here's my here's my question to you before we talk about this. Do you think that all this because we, we mentioned last time about the infighting backstage between those that don't want Triple H to take over after Vince goes away. And they're, so mm-hmm. they've been getting in Vince's ear and kind of turning him, right? Um, do you think this is kind of the plan to basically, you know, cut off your nose and spite your face sort of bit? It's like, we don't want Triple H to take over, so let's just, let's just kill his brand. Let's do whatever we can to get Vince to kill his brand. Yeah, I think that's 100% accurate because Bruce Pritchard, as we all know, is a ginormous piece of shit. And, Kevin, and even, big, Kevin and even Dunn big picture is Kevin Dunn, yes. Is an even bigger piece of shit. So you have two big pieces of shit who all they want to do is a power grab. Yep. For some odd reason, they have Vince's ear because they're both stuck in 1996 to, 19, to 2003, the Attitude Era, thinking that that's how you make people this day and age. Yes, we love that era for those who lived through it. I love it, but that's not what I want nowadays. I want maybe some throwbacks there, but I like the new flippy spinny shit a lot more. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily need the super cutting edge like chicks and you know chicks in thongs. I was gonna say chicks in thongs doing like mud wrestling and jello wrestling. You know, we want to see actual wrestling. Wrestling. I want to see women actually wrestle. Like we've we've grown leaps and bounds, and they still freaking racially profile everybody because mm-hmm. that's what you do in wrestling yeah. which is completely in- inaccurate because i mean right. look at like rohit raju and some of these other guys yes they call out to their their heritage but they that's not who they are you know like yeah oh he's an indian wrestler so he's got to come out to bollywood music it's like no not <laughs> even close like they're the most out of touch people have vince's ears and he's going to kill a brand that was Honestly, a really good product. It had great people that, yes, might have been over 30 and under six foot, which being the elite totally made fun of that, by the way. But it's just one of those things like it just boggles my mind. Like how much are you willing to destroy your brand just for the sake of it being your brand? And all these damn WWE diehards on on, um, Twitter like this is the best thing ever. It's like you are out of your goddamn mind. Like, I, I you've lost so yeah. much great talent, and you've buried the rest. Like it doesn't make sense. I mean, I don't so, know. And the thing is, like, there's a there's a shit ton of wrestling out there right now, and a lot of good wrestling. A lot of wrestling is getting news. I mean, AW is making headlines. AW is being referenced on NFL shows, on Sports Center, on Entertainment Tonight, for God's sake, and sh- you know. So it's like. And what CM Punk gets in there, then you get Daniel Bryan, you get this, you know, that gives you that gives you that extra umph over the edge, and I don't see it stopping anytime soon. New Japan put on a ridiculously good, you know, pay per view over the weekend, right? It was so yeah. enjoyable, so fun. Everybody was enthralled with it. Impact doesn't have the numbers, but as we've said, a better TV contract would give them that because their product is pretty good. Local wrestling's been doing great. Our 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 local one, Journey Pro, as everybody knows, you know they sold out the last two shows, first two shows back. So there's a lot of wrestling out there, and then there's WWE, who doesn't view themselves as a wrestling company. But they're in that sphere. And that's the part that really irks me, you know, is that you have all these great wrestlers who if you if they did go somewhere else, like 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 uh, Alistair Black, now Malachi Black, right? Or Tommy mm-hmm. End, as he's known in the independent scene, you know. Um y- you know, other ones like that, you know, is but you 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 you, you, you Stock, you've stockpiled so many of them that even with all these cuts to get rid of people, which included Ruby Soho, a hey Ruby, um, it still is just an embarrassment of what their talents could be. Keith Lee is is relegated now that he's finally back healthy, and he explained what was going on. And it was definitely a, a like a legit health scare, you know, mm-hmm. sort of thing going on, which is why he was out on the shelf for so long. So you know, hearts. Are, so lots of prayers go to him. You know, he seems to be doing much better. But they've been wrestling him on dark matches, and here's the reason why. You would think it's like, well, he's been out for a while. He's rusty. We want to warm him up, right? No. They're giving him a lot of different things in squash matches because they're trying to figure out what to do with him. 
We know we know what to do with them. Look at what Triple H did with him. Look how fucking over he was. The whole NXT invasion angle. He goes up against Roman Reigns in like the finals of the elimination of the of the Survivor Series match, right? Mm-hmm. He didn't win, but he was so over. He was I mean, it was you don't the it's there. You don't need to fucking whatever it just it just baffles my mind you have a freak of nature who's amazing athletic for as big as he is and his ring presence he's got great charisma he's got all these pieces and you don't know what to do with him like it's easy have him fucking wrestle on tv and have him be over because the crowd loves him give him his old music back and just have him pick on somebody saying you're gonna bask in my glory and it's over and then you got a feud simple as that like my god I mean, Dijakovic, I loved Dijo in, in NXT, and him and Keith Lee going at each other. And then he gets oh. moved up part of uh, whatever the shit that, you know. Re- Retribution. Re- whatever. And and when that blew up, I'll go, well, maybe we'll get old Dijo back. No, nope, no, nope, they're keeping that character, and he's just, him and, uh, it's, just, it's stupid. Him, it's stupid. him and Slapjack. Uh, t Mace, or, no, I don't, I don't know who the is fuck it, it is. Is it Mace and t Yeah. Oh, God, it's just like. Come on, this this guy is so talented, and you can see it when he's out there. It's just like it's just that's a waste. That's a waste. Don't get a star on the women's side of things. Mia Yim, where the fuck is she been? Still in catering. Still in catering, and maybe she was off all that time because she's taking care of her fiance. Maybe I don't know. I don't want to speculate, but that would make sense why she had an extended period, right? Mm-hmm. She still has a debut. Since they broke up Retribution and she moved to SmackDown, we haven't seen her at all. <laughs> I mean, it's just some of these things are just in, and that's those are the people they kept. Everybody else they got rid of. You know, that's just mind boggling. But i i tend to I tend to agree. I think they're trying. I think they're trying to kill it as a way to damage the chances of Triple H taking over. So, yeah. Ugh. Well, that was a tangent yeah. that we got on there. Uh, so those are sure, the numbers, yeah. anyway. For <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> yeah, down a hundred thousand people. The show was okay. It was. A, it was a, it, for as far as go home shows. I mean, it wasn't that. It was okay. Uh, Kushida wasn't medically cleared. I don't know what that means necessarily. Yeah, so they, he's got something going on, and I guess his match for takeover is in jeopardy. He doesn't have a match for takeover. Uh, I thought he was going to be an open air. He, maybe that was it because mm. he was supposed to defend the cruiserweight title against Roddy Strong, uh, and that got you know canceled. the sole member, the sole member of the Diamond Mine. Well, they still got the they still got the uh, the Japanese guy who the big guy who does the, who's the trainer or whatever. Yeah, he, yeah, he's still there, but he's not a wrestler. He's confirmed as like uh, so. Yeah, the sole wrestler in Diamond Mine, <sighs> which just. Throw that throw that out the window if you know, because Malcolm Bivens and is great being a mouthpiece. I like Malcolm Bivens as a mouthpiece in general. Same, right? Same. Um, I like Roddy Strong as a wrestler, and them the two of them together that works, right? So yeah. That's that basically take the dynamic of what they're trying to do with Tyler Rust and Malcolm Bivens, and just you got you, Tyler Rust is now gone, so just you know replace him with Roddy Strong, and that's good, but. Whatever. He pulls an open challenge, and it's answered by Ilya Dragunov, which this match was actually legitimately good. Dragunov got busted open, and he just didn't give a shit. He had like, like eight stitches above his eye, right? <laughs> just kept fighting blood everywhere. It was great. It was actually a pretty good opener to the night. Uh, Ilya ended up getting the win, of course, going into takeover, right? Uh, mm-hmm. And then you get Hit Row and Legato Del Fantasma do a little f- back outside f- Hit Row comes out. And Hit Row's one. We talked about this, you know, kind of their their racial and cultural appropriation tactics towards some talent. Um, <laughs> see, uh, what's, what's the dude with the 24-7 championship, uh, the, uh, the Japanese Reginald? Guy? No, 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 no. Oh, no, oh, no. oh uh, uh, Takazawa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ta- yeah. <sighs> I mean... How he didn't, how he doesn't like storm out of there fuming mad. I mean, he is. You talk about cultural appropriation. I mean, just oh my god. But as far as all that goes, Hit Row and Legato are both actually cultural appreciation done correctly. Everybody yes. in Hit Row actually does rap. I don't know if Ashante does. Now that I think about it, but she does. I know that the other. 
Like, like Swerve actually does rap and do stuff. The other two, Top Dollar and the girl, they actually have albums, you know. So mm-hmm. it's a legitimate thing. And the whole, like, Mexican, like, legacy thing is finally come to where it, like, I didn't like it for the longest time because I didn't get it, you know. It was didn't make a lot of sense, and they finally packaged it and got to the right point. So I actually generally like both of them, even though Hitbo has the logo that drives me insane. I'm sorry, I can't get over it. But and where did they where did they get into it at? Well, so they started off the hit row is in the ring, and then they get called out because you know Santos is outside. He's apologized because he's like, I know this disrespected your culture. Come out man to man. I'm all alone. So it was outside in the parking lot, which led to them getting jumped, and then hit, Hippo came outside, and everybody started brawling in the parking lot because. It's an NXT show. That's like rig number two, right? The parking lot. The parking lot of NXT is the second most dangerous thing in all of WWE Edom. The number one is a phone call from John Laronitis. That's it. <laughs> like, I swear. It's just like, it's that and Laronitis. Old Johnny Ace. Right. I mean, I would, I would, get, me, I would get me an Uber on like a moped. And I, I, I take me up to the door. Take me straight to the door. Take me straight to the door. I'm good. All right, man. <laughs> yeah. Like everybody knows, like, don't go out the back. Don't, don't go out the back. Shit's going to get real. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Here's the ring, and there's a door right here on the side that goes directly to the parking lot. Don't go out there. Don't go <laughs> out take there. The side exit. I'm going well, to go out the get. side. They always get. Yeah. They always get. I'd, I'd, I'd go through the office, go through the front freaking door is what I'd do. I go out the peeps. <laughs> I'm like, hey, hey, I'm going to sign some autographs. I'll come out with you. I'd, I'd be like, I know. Pick me up out front, not in the parking lot. So, um, they're setting that up, I think, for next week. So, post-takeover, they're going to have a six-man tag, finally. Good God. That'd be a good one. Which is, I mean, as I said, I'm fine with all this, but they've been taking their time getting to the point, right? So, point happens Mm -hmm. in a week. Then you had uh, Cameron Grimes versus uh, Josh Briggs. Josh Briggs is one of the guys from the uh, the breakthrough breako break star yeah, tournament, breakout. yeah, whatever it's breakout called. Tournament. Yeah, he's like he's one of the he's a bigger guy, you know, and he's got a good look to him, and uh, you know, he's over six foot and he's under thirty eight years old. So Vince probably loves him. Uh, this is a legitimately fun match. So LA Knight came out with. Grimes, of course, right? And uh, DiBiase was already at ringside. Already at, uh, or not ringside, uh, or at the commentary table. And LA Knight sits down next to him. And the two of them are like, kind of squabbling to start whatever. And he said, he, and, he, and so DiBiase goes, how much you pay this kid to, to come out here and wrestle? You know, because they, they understand each other, right? Because they're both rich. And it's like, it's chump change, $10,000. That's all it took to get him out here. And he goes, well, I'll tell you what. Double or nothing, my guy wins. I bet you, you know, double or nothing, Cameron Grimes. And he goes, 20 grand, do you want to double on this? I'm in. So they make a side, they, they get a little action, side action going, 20 grand for for the match, right? Uh, Grimes ends up winning, of course, you know. Of course. And, of course. and then there's, DBS stands up and is like, I just, easiest $20,000 I ever made, blah, blah, blah. Gets a punch in the face from LA Knight. And then LA Knight beats up Cameron Grimes and walks out, right? So. Uh, put a pin in that. We'll come back in a brief second because next we have index things. And, okay. So, last week had all the vignette of them in the uh, restaurant, right? That's all it was mm-hmm. for them last week. This mm-hmm. week there's a match. So, before the match, uh, they're backstage and there's Candice and, and Johnny and, and Indy's there. They have a, a missing again poster behind them with Austin Theory, by the way. <laughs> Who, in case you're wondering, Theory's been working main event and doing dark matches. He's probably going to go to the main roster soon. Yep. Um, oh, so. Before you move on, I will like to send out an official congratulations. Baby Wrestling is on the way. That's right. Candace Baby Lerae Wrestling is prego. Congratulations to you both of them. So Baby I Wrestling know. That's, that, will that, be that's, here someday that's, soon. That's really cool. So, um and yeah, so she's definitely going to move more into a uh, non-combatant role for the short term. But she still plans on being there, working, doing stuff. Uh, with this whole like index and the family angle, it actually works really well in all that. Cause oh, yeah. It, Indy is clueless, so you can never not even understand why. Is 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 like why do you keep eating all this cake and you're putting it on pounds? We we're a tag team. And it's like oh, uh, I'm pregnant. Oh, what? It, we'll we'll hit the gym tomorrow. And, you know, like I could definitely see them doing stuff like that. So anyway, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
so so they're they're backstage and you know Johnny is just like oh this guy I don't get this guy you know and she's like we've been doing a lot of things we've been going on dates we're doing this and every, everything she says Johnny responds with yuck oh we did walk on the beach yuck we did we went, we went bike riding yuck we did this yuck we went you know balloon riding and he's actually a pretty baller move you know that's actually a <laughs> <laughs> Typical Gargano. Love Gargano. Good. And she's putting on these gloves, right? You know, it's like, what's with the gloves? And then, of, of course, here comes Dexter. He's like, how long are you going to stand there, weirdo? And so Johnny then goes, this is great. Johnny then goes, hey, hey, weirdo, how was that cake last week? Because, you know, as he when he was the waiter, he the cake got dropped into uh, uh, Dexter's face, right? And then Indy, like, mm-hmm. licked it off and everything. And Indy responds with, oh, he loved it. He even had room for pie. To which Johnny, they walk out. Johnny and Cam's both go, well, I looked over that menu. It does, there's no pie on that menu. Perfect. Yeah, she, she made that joke. It was great. It was kudos, Andy. Kudos. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Then, they had a, then they had a mixed tag match against Robert Stone. Yes, that Robert Stone. And Jesse Kamei with uh, Frankie Monet at ringside, right? And this is more of a comedy match more than anything, especially because Robert Stone was in there because he's so terrible. Uh, mm. But in a good way. He just got the shit kicked out of him. So uh, they win. And there's several times during the match. Indy kept, like, checking on with Beth. Because Beth Phoenix has been fully invested in, in, in being an index shipper from day one, right? Well, day one. She's down since day one. She's been down since day one, right? So after the match, they in the ring briefly, and then uh, Indy just says, you know, excuse me. She rolls out of the ring. I think she's going to go check, you know, she's going to go consult her girlfriend, right, over there on commentary before smooching her man or something, right? So she goes over, and she gets slipped something from uh, Beth Phoenix. And she goes back in the ring, and Indy gets down on her knee and proposes to Dexter Loomis. Yes, that happened. With a ring that has an eyeball instead of a uh, <laughs> diamond. That's perfect. <laughs> That's so perfect. And he said yes. He, he nodded yes. I don't know. But there's a NXT wedding. I think it's the oh first wedding in NXT. Yeah, Because we, we know nothing can go wrong in a wrestling re- wedding, right? No, they <laughs> without a hitch every single time. Oh, my God. Um, so, yeah, that, that is by far the highlight of the show. Um, yeah, Carmelo Hayes, he beat Duke Hudson uh, for the other semifinal, so he's going to go off against that the, the, the beast of a man, you know, whoever that guy, 6'8", 400 and whatever pounds. Yeah, he's going to win. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I think so, but Carmelo Hayes looked impressive. Then he had a, a J.C. Jane promo for her and uh, Gigi Dolan. So last week, Gigi Dolan had a promo, and now she has a promo. We're talking about us and us. And I'm like, okay, so they're really trying to sell those, us on this whole tag team for the two of them. I yeah. get it. I kind of would rather have Gigi Dolan by herself and maybe have this girl by herself. But I got to have tag teams if you have a tag team championship, right? So Yeah, okay. it's a good way to introduce them first. And then, of course, they'll split and feud with each other. <laughs> and, you know, the typical WWE way. They'll, eventually, they'll do some stuff. right? It is what it is. But I'm just glad they're getting a push. So that's good for yeah. them. Yeah. Um, then you had MSK versus Imperium. This was a very entertaining match for the tag team championships. Uh, Walter came out um, and was trying to, and he he basically he, they're sowing the seeds for an Imperium breakup too, which fucking stupid. Um, but you know he's basically you know doing the pep top earlier in the show. He was saying about how he wanted them to you know achieve more and all this whatever you know. So. They've been tag team championship champions once since you know, they've been over here, but whatever. Um, match was entertaining. MSK was great, right? Uh, mm-hmm. It ends up, you know, Walter comes out and he tries to get involved, and Ilya comes out. And he distracts Walter, and it leads to Imperium get, and getting kind of, you know, discombobulated. MSK eventually does pull their finisher and gets the win, right? Mm-hmm. So you had that, and then, you know, Walter beat up Ilya a little bit more. That match, I'm still excited to see. I think that that's going to be the best. I don't know. Takeover's got some matches that I'm legitimately like, that's going to be a good match. I mean, the whole Cole, Cole and O'Reilly thing, it's, a, it's, it's literally the exact same thing that was done with Gargano. But it should be good. It should be. Uh, they, they end the whole night with, oh, and by the way, so there was a, 
there was a little promo done backstage where you know uh, DiBiase is trying to uh, talking to Grimes, and he's like, I don't know, maybe got maybe got a little too over our head, kid, and you know and that fires up Grimes, and you know he's like, you know, he's like, oh, we're gonna, you know, he gets him going, he rips his shirt off, and it's back to the old Cameron Grimes here again, which leaves Dave DiBiase stand up and like just doing his evil cackle, so his pep talk, <laughs> his pep pep talk. Worked in the roundabout ways. Uh, you end the night with uh, Karrion Cross and uh, Samoa Joe breaking all the barriers around the ring. And that was your show. <laughs> so. So. All right. Well. Yep. That was it. Exciting. We'll see what happens on TakeOver. We'll have. The biggest thing, is, like I said, this weekend we'll have uh, picks for, for SummerSlam and picks for TakeOver. We'll go over our picks and results next week. But. I'm not as I I probably have been less excited for this takeover than any other takeover in several years. Yeah, because the card is small. It's only got five announced matches. Well, technically seven. <laughs> well, we're not. No, no, no. It's five. <laughs> it's five because I mean you got Walter versus Dragonoff two. <sighs> yes, give me that. Yes. Carrying Cross versus Smojo, we already know what's going to happen there. Like, yeah. If anybody doesn't know what's going on there, you are. Uh, they, not I mean, WWE has killed that match. It was. Yeah, I would. I would have been excited for that match a month ago. Not now. Yeah. Raquel Gonzalez versus Dakota Kai, which I'm interested I, to see what happens. Well, I you know, have a feeling what's going to happen if they, if they do the right thing. Yeah, I know. Uh, um, La Knight versus Cameron Grimes again. I think we know where, where that's going to go, and then Kyle O'Reilly versus Adam Cole. And the two out of three falls match. Those are the only advertised matches so far. That's all there is. That's all there's going to be. So it's not. They're, they're making a concerted effort to keep NXT TakeOvers around two hours anyway, from what I've read. Yeah, but I mean, the tag team championships for either side aren't going up. Like, mm -hmm. on the, a TakeOver? Well, well, the women's tag team championships haven't even been seen other than in like either backstage interviews or promos, you know, like. You know, Zoe Stark trying to be friends with, you know, Io Shirai promos since they won them. I don't know if there's an injury or what, but not even, not even, feet, not even there. And this, this show had. It had one women's match. No, it had, excuse me, it had, two, yeah, it had one women's match. And that was actually a mixed tag match. Yeah, it wasn't even. It's not the norm. I mean, they've, this is already off the normal, like, NXT blueprint. So already. it's gonna get worse, it's, ladies and gentlemen. Parker it, Bordeaux's gonna come in and he's gonna kill everybody. Oh yeah, because this guy, this guy went out and bought himself an entry level Mercedes and thinks he's a boss. Did you yeah. see that? I'm in my twenties. I bought my first Mercedes. I'm amazing. Like, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You buy a GLA. My Kia actually costs more than that. Kiss my ass. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. All right. Let's talk about AEW. So that was NXT. Whatever. We'll get to it later. AEW, yeah. though. Dynamite. Because this was some interesting but good stuff. Dynamite planted a lot of seeds tonight. A lot of seeds all over the place. So it starts off not with a promo, but again with a match. So they're back to their usual, well, which I really appreciated. Well, it was it was going to start with a promo that led to a match let's put it that way yeah yeah because john moxley was coming out with his best friend eddie kingston to wild thing through the crowd and he straight up got nancy kerrigan by <laughs> 2.0 with uh, daniel garcia uh, if you don't know what Nancy Kerrigan is, that means one, you're too young. And then two, he got hit in the back of the knee with some kind of metal object. Mm. <laughs> so it he was, got Nancy it was, Kerrigan. It was, it was a good. It was a good nod. The only thing that would make it better if you've been like sitting there. Going, oh why? my! <laughs> why? 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 Yeah, just well, it, that would have made it. But anyway. Sorry, but <laughs> not sorry. So then here come out um, 2.0, like they do all that stuff and they go out to the middle of the ring and they call out Sting and Darby. Let's go now, basically. Yeah. And lights hit and then Sting's go. music comes out. First time you're seeing Sting on TNT in 20 years, ladies and gentlemen. And the last time TNT had anything, that was Thunder. It wasn't. 
uh, Nitro. That was on TBS um, at that time because they switched. Remember, they, they did the, the yeah, switch. Yeah, they flip-flopped. Yeah. Yeah. So last time he's been on there since in 20 years. So 2001. Crazy. Like, Crazy. damn. So that happens. Then they start doing Darby Allen stuff. Lights hit. He pops up. Oh, he's in the ring behind him with his skateboard, and he hits one of them with his skateboard. Uh, <laughs> then they start fighting all over the damn arena. Like they tornado, were just it's going a tornado nuts. tag match, so there's no disqualification. No DQ, no nothing. And my God, I have to give 2.0 some, some props because they got some serious heat from that crowd, and it was awesome. They did great. The entire match was really damn good, actually. There is a spot where somehow Darby Allen got onto like the the concrete uh, concourse, like you know, the, the edge of it. <laughs> the tunnel ran the down tunnel. it. Yeah, the tunnel. And then just jumped off of it onto 2.0. Mm-hmm. Eddie Kingston comes out of nowhere, grabs Daniel Garcia, so it makes it a, an official, you know, two on two tornado. Um, but there's tons of fighting. The, the the ending was really cool. Ending was awesome. So Sting was going for a 10 punch. He got stopped at four. Um, Sting gets power bombed through a table. Okay. Double, double power bombed. Yeah. It's a te- double power bomb. To he both. no sells the shit out of it. Old school. Hits Straight back up. Yes. <laughs> it was awesome. Up, like it was old school Sting. Place one ape shit for it. He gets up. Then he throws him. Uh, he's messing with him. Darby comes out. They come into to Sting. Sting does a double death, de- a double scorpion, scorpion death, death drop. drop. Then he stacks him. This Sting awesome. does, and then he does a double scorpion death lock to get for a the double, double tap. tap out for the win. Your winners, Sting and Darby out. I thought I thought for a second they were just going to stack him and then they're going to do a do- they're going to do a death drop. It's like no, he's going to start to do a and then he'll do the nope. He just like Darby was on the top of the rope, just kind of perched there, just watching. And <laughs> Sting just yeah, went down. Yeah, I was down. like, is he going to do a coffin drop onto him? Like <laughs> that's, what that's what I thought. That's what I thought. That'd be cool. No, whatever. So that happened. Great match. Hell of a way to 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 start off a show. Um, right after that, they go into Sammy Guevara's big announcement. And this was actually this done great. on dark about 30 minutes before the show actually happened. And it's really damn cool. So Sammy called up his, his girlfriend, longtime girlfriend for eight years. And he proposed to her in the middle of the ring. He's right. like, you know, you've been with me through ups and downs and everything. And I, I want to make sure you're always with me forever. And it was really sweet. She said, That's yes, awesome. they're engaged. Sammy Guevara and his girlfriend, Pam. Pam are engaged so congratulations to them well deserved yeah, pam the former uh, bte or i should say sammy guerra vlog uh, champion yes one time. yes she was a blog champion she had a short reign but it was still memorable yes it was <laughs> it was great all right so right after that you got into the sammy guevara sean spears match oh this match was a banger right this off match. the bat so sammy guevara comes out and he gets attacked from behind too. So literally 2.0 to the same, like to, to Kingston and Moxley. Well, Sa- Sean Spears does it to Sammy Guevara. So they start doing stuff. And then out of nowhere, freaking uh, Sean Spears gets down on the apron and here's Sammy Guevara. Cause they're able to separate. And he does his jumping dive from the, the ramp. Cause the ramp was the ramp goes the straight ring. to the ring. Right. Yeah. He does his his little flip right onto him. It looked amazing just to start off. That's just the start. This is, the bell and, hasn't rung yet. <laughs> yeah, the bell hasn't even damn rung at this point. So, I I, I could get into all the moves. Yeah, we're not, yeah, don't, don't we're not gonna recap yeah. every little bit about the match. So, so. Tully gets tossed out for throwing his sweater <laughs> oh, at Ref Aubrey. Aubrey was so animated. She was she was a, oh. she got her own chant in the middle of this match. She was great. She's a treasure. She is a treasure. And she Love me some sense. Aubrey Edwards. Most definitely. So right after that, you know, Guevara and them are going at it. Um, Spears hits a nasty avalanche C4 off of the second rope on Sammy. Sammy is able to kick out of it some way. Um, they end up working their way onto the, the apron of the ring, which, by the way, is the hardest part of the ring, if you didn't know that. It, it, it is. is. It's, really? It's I, I thought it was the softest part of the ring. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> earlier in the match, so Sean Spears set up the old school 
The barriers. Uh, it's like it's barrier. a bike rack is what they are. They use yeah. them as barriers. Yeah, the bike rack. He set it up basically from the barricade on this side and the ring and the ring. So it's just hanging out right there. Right. And Sean Spears is gonna go for a uh, another um you know, D V D. Um and Sammy's able to kick out of it. He hits him a couple times. He tries to go for a super kick. And Sean's like, no, 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 no. He throws his foot down instantly right into another super kick. Freaking um, Sammy's able to get him on his shoulders. He does a DVD onto the ring barrier, which right. was sick. And it looked he, great. He, it looked amazing. It bent it in half. It bent it in half. <laughs> um, so he rolls Sean in there. He hits a 6-3-0 off of the top, which, of course, you know, he got the crowd so hyped for it. God. One, two, kick out kick by out. Sean Spears. I'm like, what the hell? So Sammy can't believe it. He's just lost his mind with mm -hmm. it. He drops down his knee pad and hits some of the nastiest knee strikes to Sean Spears' face. So nasty, I say, he forced Sean Spears to bleed fucking everywhere <laughs> wow like it was just like catch it pack. was yeah knee 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 big knee go to sleep knee just knees all over the place he, knees, yeah. and then he gets him up and then he puts him up uh, you know basically rack rack attack style flips him over hits his uh, his gth one two three your winner is sammy guevara right and this match was this match was on this was this was my match of the night i love this same by but far the there's best. a match after it that may contend with it because it was pretty damn amazing. So I mean, this was my match of the night, and you even had Jr. giving the whole like nods to Eddie Guerrero. He 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 compares Sam Guerrero yeah. to Eddie Guerrero quite a bit, and it makes sense because there's, you see a lot of it. Right. I do see young young WCW Eddie Guerrero. I yeah. see that in Sammy. Yeah, now Sammy's like, not Mexican though, so there is that. There, but, there is that. He is Texan yes. though. He's a Texan <laughs> with, a, with a Spanish heritage. The Spanish right God. Now. He is the yeah, Spanish, Spanish God. Anyway, Super this is good. great all around. The whole story was fantastic. Love every second. Yes. All right. So after this, Tony Giovanni is um, with Christian Cage. They get interrupted by Don Callis. Don Callis cuts a great heel promo as he always does. <laughs> Um, you know, talk about how he put him over for the first time on TV in Winnipeg, which, yeah, I thought that was a good thing. Christian starts to cut him off. Don's just going his nuts. And then he knows that he's in Kenny's head and he calls him a card a piece of shit. Um, and he gets a laugh out of Tony Giovanni at that point. We're going to put a pin in that. Okay. So after that, they do a quick little thing about Dante Martin, about how he just went off, mm -hmm. um, last week. I thought that was great. Yeah. Then after this, he'll promo uh the night. Heel promo of the night. I don't care what anybody says. I will fight you for it. Freaking <laughs> Dan Lambert comes out. You know the the America Top Team guy cuts the filthiest. I mean, freaking heel promo I've heard in a minute. Like I want him to be my manager if I is ever in wrestling. Here's the thing. I love this to a point, and then I hated how they finished it because th it was so good. Like Dan Lambert. Is just the, I mean, this is like a throwback retro JJ Dillon heel fuck you pro. I mean, it was, like you said, fan. He had two former UFC guys in the ring with him. It was great. Yeah, he had, he had Andre Arlovsky and Junior Dos Santos, two former heavyweight champions. There you go. I'm not a UFC. I'm not a UFC. Yeah, guy, yeah, so yeah. yeah. Whatever. And, whatever. And he's like, you know, I talked to Dana, my good friend Dana White, and he allowed him to come out here, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, AEW Chance came up. He's like, you guys, this is your AEW. It's so funny. Like, he was just amazing. <laughs> he and then he called everybody point. nerds who were locked in their parents' basement, which I thought was another great well, call out because it made me think of MJF's old promo about that. But he, 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 even more than that, he said, locked playing D&D &D &D in D. your mother's basement. And it's important that that, he, that happened. Because and looking it comes looking out. up creepy shit on the dark web. Yes. <laughs> that, so, oh yeah. Then okay, cue Lance Archer's music again. So Lance Archer's gonna be the big bad who saves him, right? Wrong. Lance Archer comes. Lance Archer who he, plays D and D, by the way. That's he why he does I, play D and D. That's why I brought. That's why I thought that was like some foreshadowing. Then and he then gets attacked, <sighs> not by Junior Dos Santos or Andre Lofsky. He gets attacked by the Men of the Year and. 
um, Scorpio Sky and All Ego Ethan Page, my wife's favorite wrestler. Right. He's Which <laughs> he's a good-looking man. So he, I don't happened. mind. I, I don't mind. I don't it. mind either one of it, but it's like. So you, you basically have the whole Dan Lambert thing was throwaway, basically. Kinda, but not really, because I think it was just you know to set up, because him and Lance He's, Archer already had beef, so it was sure. is a ploy to get Lance Archer out there to set up Lance Archer in the men of the year. I think that it, it, it I was know, done but tactfully. It, it, I mean, I agree. It felt kind of get it. I ending get it. The the, force, yeah. It felt disconjointed a little bit, you know. Yeah, like you're forcing that that you know rivalry to start basically. I don't know. I would have rather see him like actually go through and do a thing with him beating up or the the two UFC guys or something or there's some yeah they're gonna be separated by eight million people. Or there's a thing and then then have it naturally transition into and then you know while he's going back he goes by and then he gets you know something like that. it it just it just felt a little disconjointed to me. It, it, but it whatever, like, it, if it felt like Chris and Stewart trying to show emotion, it just <laughs> felt really forced and uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Like, we just don't know what we're looking at right now. That's, so that's, that's kind of how I felt. All right. So after this, Jericho, um, you know, says he's going to do the ultimate prize. He cuts a promo on there and he's going to whip MJF's ass and he needs the crowd to sing a song. Put a pin in that. All right. So next, this is the other match of the night candidate for me, just to be blatantly honest. And that is the Jurassic Express versus the Young Bucks with the rest of the super elite because that's what they're calling themselves now, the super mm -hmm. elite. Right. Minus okay. Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega wasn't present. To Kenny start. Omega did not walk out with them at first. Put a pin in that. We like putting pins in things right now. That's all we do. Do Don Callis <laughs> is out on commentary, spitting great Don Callis game. Oh, Again, so I good. love him. Him and him and, and Shivani. Excuse me. Shivani, oh my goodness. It is just gold it, between those they are two. They're so great together. It's fantastic. So this this match was a hell of a match. Again, typical Young Bucks match. Once they do a really good job of showcasing talent um, and also, of course, putting themselves over, but they still showcase everybody. Yeah. And it was, it was lots of great moves. Luchasaurus, you know, he did a couple just amazing-ass moves. He did a kip-up into, you know, so um, choke slams. And he does a double choke slam, and then they. So at one point, they they have Matt in the ring, and they throw Nick over the top mm -hmm. of, the, of the rope onto the uh, apron. They fight off all of the elite, so it's literally just them and Matt, and they do the their uh, thoracic express. <laughs> which I think is weird that they're Jurassic and it's Thoracic Express. And that's right. the one where, where Luchasaurus flips, a, flips him over himself and then Jungle Boy catches him into the seated powerbomb. Kick ass. It's, 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 a, it's a stupid, it's a ridiculous move. Yeah. The, one, two, no! Nick I mean, Jackson comes in and makes a save. Then there's another spot where they're trying to do a freaking uh, superplex off of the top rope, which looks scary as fuck because... Uh, of of how it worked out, but um, yeah, they didn't go off the top rope. He tried to go. He climbed from yeah, the top rope to onto of... Luchasaurus's shoulders, and, and he didn't have the slipped. balance. Yeah, yeah, his foot started <laughs> slipping, so they ended up landing on their side. Uh, and it looked scary. It was scary. near botch. It was near one two kick out, and then um, there was a spot where they uh, the young bucks hit the Michinoku driver on. Um, uh, Jungle Boy, one, two, kick out. Like, oh my god, like, who, what's happening? Are we gonna get new things? Then, out of nowhere, they're able. Uh, oh, this is what happened. Freaking, so, um, can, can Luchasaurus, you well, yeah, can, yeah, Luchasaurus comes out, he does a big flip to just eliminate tried to the clear, rest of the clear the crap on the outside, clear the crap on the other. And then, Marco Stunt is on, on the rope, you know, and he's like, come on, come on, 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 on the uh, entrance way. Here comes Kenny Omega and a chick magnet shirt. Chick C magnet M. Just want to throw that out there. That it's, is what CM stands for in CM Punk. Chick magnet punk. Yes. A, yes, I know. I caught that too. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> then he smacks Marco Stunt on the back with a with a chair. 
He slides the chair in, and they're going to totally do the same thing that happened last time, where 100%. they use the chair because the elite is starting to come to their senses and um, distract the referee. So at that point, here comes Christian Cage. Christian Cage and Kenny Omega are getting at they They go off into the back, um, and then looks like Matt is going to do a suplex onto the chair of of uh, Jungle Boy. Jungle Boy is able to reverse it. And he actually does a, a, a suplex of his own onto the chair. It looked really great. More like Slid a brain buster. More like a yeah, brain it was more buster. of a brain buster. You're right. He slides out of the way. One, two. Matt Jackson uh, comes in, Nick, makes a save. Nick or, sorry, Nick Jackson comes in, makes a save. Then they're able to... Uh, Again, that's when Luchasaurus was out. They do the BTE trigger. One, two, three. Your winners and still champions, the Young Bucks. Sorry, I know I went through a lot of moves on it, but there's a <laughs> lot of things that happen at the end. I know, I know, I know. We, said, we said we were going to go, go, go move by move, but some of these matches gets Jamie worked up. He's got to go through it. So Because that's okay. – I love we're not gonna do. We're not going to do every match, though. Don't worry, though. But you sometimes love Jamie gets – I love moves. Jamie Jamie gets in when there's especially when there's a spot fest of a match, he'll go into it. So Yes, dude. I love I I loved, 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 loved when uh Brand Cutler went to go do his uh, token interference. He got up on the ring, Luchasaurus was there, and he had a fake flare. He tried to pull like a Jurassic Express with a Jurassic uh park with the flare. Yes, to Luchasaurus. I thought that was great. It was yeah. great. It was it so was funny. So I love that. Match was good. I still like I still like the Guevara Spears match better personally, but this was right below it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, y- you can make an argument for both. That's that's where I'm at. Yeah. So after the match, Gallows is carrying Christian Cage on his shoulder into the middle of the ring. They beat the shit out of him. They beat everybody up. Yeah. Like they usually do. They hit, you know, he hits the knee trigger and blah blah blah. Then they then they get hits a one winged angel. They do a three count to set up, I guess, all out. Which I still hope that is not the case because we got this match for free. But anyway. <sighs> After that, you got Tony <laughs> Schiavone talking with Britt Baker, Rebel, and Jamie Hader. Sorry, Rebel and Jamie Hader. Uh, it's talking about Red Velvet, and Jamie Hader is challenging Red Velvet to a match um, um, next week. So we'll see. Yep. Okay. You have a string on. of promos here. So you can just go. I, mean, I don't have much comment on many of these promos. Yeah, and then uh, for some odd reason, the best friends think of Big Money, Matt Hardy, blah, 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 whatever. They're setting up <laughs> Orange Cassidy versus Matt Hardy. Sure. Okay, Tony Schiavone introduces Paul White. Paul White is sure. talking about how it felt great to be in the ring. Here comes uh, this, this whole thing took Marshall. way too long. Oh, this yeah, that way was too, way too this, long. This, this is my big thing I hated. This should have been before uh, – you don't even really get into it. The long and the short of it is, you know, the you know Tony Tony Khan approved there's going to be a match at All Out between uh, Paul White and QT Marshall. This should have been a thing done on Dark Elevation. Its continuity is there. That is the show that Paul White commentates on. And it adds validity to your – I mean, you get good viewing and viewership on your dark shows as it is on YouTube. Mm-hmm. This gives it even more. It's like, hey, you don't want to miss Dark Elevation on Monday nights, guys. They announced a match for All Out on the freaking show, you know? Yeah. It should have been done there. It just, this could have been another match. You could have put a match in here in the middle of, the, of, for, of this thing. Maybe another women's match. Just saying. Just throw um, that out there. Just, so, yeah. Know, so, QT Marshall and Paul White, the big slow, going at it there. I bet they add the rest of the factory, and then he's going to pick two people, which one of them will be Fuego Del Sol, because that needs to happen. That'd be cool. Um, it's probably so, going to be It's probably going to be on the buy-in, That's what my guess is. Yeah, I think this match will be on the buy-in, which will be there. It's for- a it's a buy-in match. It, this is this is a dark elevation thing. It should anyway. Yeah, I know. So after this, Jay Cargill and Mark Sterling cut a, a promo on Kiara Hogan talking about how Kiara Hogan's been doing really well. So they call her out by name. I feel like she's gonna be all elite. It makes a lot of sense. I love me some Kira Hogan anyway. So they are going to fight each other on this upcoming Friday's Rampage in the United Center, which is again sold out. I want to see Kira Hogan. I know that this kind of. I don't want to. I don't want to like pigeonhole her, mm-hmm. but I would like to see her as part of the Jade Cargill brand. Same. Her that, those two together. Oh, oh my goodness. I mean, they like could build that into a stable. 
Because Jay, Jay's getting better. If you watch her, she wrestled this week on uh, one of the darks. I don't remember which one. Regular but, dark. And she's dark. gotten she's so getting better. much better. She's getting much better. But I think they even have somebody a little more skilled like Kira Hogan, you know, which is um, interesting. That's going to help her. I mean, you know, the the pitfalls, if you do sign Kira Hogan, is trying to figure out something to do where you're not like, like – her girlfriend is Diamante. So – you don't want to necessarily, you know, you you don't want to break that kayfabe into the TV world because because they're very much in different you know head spaces inside of the ethos. So you know, Diamante, former LAX, is feuding with Swole and all this stuff. Kira Hogan's definitely been part of like Black Girl Magic for her time in Impact, and that's what she's you know. So I. You know, I, 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 I think that her pairing with Jade, while it bears resemblance to what she did with Tasha Steeles, mm-hmm. I just think it'd be great for Jade. It'd give her like an intro in, right? Mm-hmm. And I, I like it. I think it'd be a good thing. I, I, we don't really have women. I mean, other than like, like Brit's little stable of, of you know, enforcers there's no real there, i mean there's no there's no women stable there's no women nothing right yeah evilise and diamante are broken up although evilise apparently wouldn't mind coming back to AEW. is the thing that i read yeah. i read that too i read that too and that kind of surprised the hell out of me to be honest maybe with you. maybe she's humbled up which is great she's always had the talent and anyway but she, but like maybe apologize and be more professional that's all i got to say I know, but that was the, that was her and her and Diamante were the last like pairing of women's. Really, there's no other, there's nothing. So I think yeah. that that's. A, I'm not saying start a tag division inside of. We still need to get this women's they're division not, right. They're not ready for all that. No, no, uh, the women's division is going to get right, but I think this is a good step there. But I'm interested to see this. So on Rampage this Friday, hell yeah, let's see it. Yeah. So speaking of of Rampage, um. Tony Schiavone is in the back with the elite. Schiavone oh, reveals, nice. man, he, he earned his stripes today. He was on TV a lot. He was a um, lot. All <laughs> over the place. So he was with them. He let them know that the world tag team uh, titles will be up for grabs at All Out in a steel cage because they are doing an AEW tag team title eliminator tournament. Another long ass name. Too long. But, too long. <laughs> it's fine. So they're doing a tag team tournament. That's all I'm calling because it, it, it is an eliminator. So it's going to start... On Friday, and they're yep. just doing four matches. There's Which, there are two matches. Four sorry, teams. Two matches. Four three teams matches involved. total. Sorry, four teams. Thank you. Yeah. So the very first match is going to be the Varsity Blondes, who have been getting over a lot lately. That's on. That's on. Ramp, that's on. Uh, that's on. Not on Rampage. That's on uh, Dynamite next week. Uh, Friday is actually going to be Jurassic Express versus Private Party. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes. So Jurassic Express versus Private Party will be on Rampage, and the Varsity Blondes versus the over. Lucha Brothers. Yes! On, we, on Dynamite next week. Yes. Dynamite next week. Yep. Dynamite, yes. week. Yep. Dynamite yes. in Milwaukee. My, my, my birth town. As so, we know. Whew. Yeah. It's, it's got to be Lucha Brothers. It's got to be. like, And the Lucha Brothers are the team who can take the titles off of them. Well, you've already... Ha- I mean, you, you ha- here's... Here, private Party... Like them, love them, whatever. But they're not going. They're not going to eventually go up against. You know, they're not going to do super heel versus super heel, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Varsity Blondes, the, as you said, they're beginning. They're they're getting over more and more. But they're still a little. They're still a little green for a a a, 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 a pay per view steel cage match, right? Jurassic <laughs> yes. Express just lost about ten minutes ago. To <laughs> the, yeah. the young, so I wish Dark Order was there in their stead. Just saying, because I would love to see Stu and Uno versus the Young Bucks in a steel cage. But Stu No, Stu No, Stu No, sure, great. Um, uh, one two, one two. Uh, Evil but Stu. no, it's gotta be Lucha Brothers, and that match is gonna be ridiculous, and we're gonna be there to see it, and I. Can't wait. <laughs> I know. I know. We're, we're going to mark out so hard on that one. Oh. All right. So there's another one with Taz in the ring with Ricky Starks, whatever. I'm not even getting that one. This that is, was, that one was terrible. More The same Taz that's still going on from goddamn six months ago, basically. Stop it. Move. Do something different. Do something different Nothing's with Cage. Changed. Do something different with, you know, Ricky Starks. Just fucking do something. Yeah. Yeah. 
just it, I'm over it. All right. So after this, we get our fourth match of the night. That's it so far. <laughs> um, and this is Penelope Ford versus Texas's own Thunder Rosa. Mm-hmm. This is a good match, Texas- actually. This is a very good match, and it's a shame that it was the only women's match, and it, and it basically was started before, covered the break, and then, you know, yeah. they, did th- they did that, which they, this is what they did about a year and a half ago, right? So it's like, mm. eh. but uh, they had a lot of setup for All Out. I get it. So it is. So, like- and to your point, um, freaking Thunder Rosa was Texas out. She came out with the Texas flag, <laughs> and her gear was Texas flag. All Texas gear, yeah. It was great. So she got a huge pop, as she should. She freaking deserves it. I am so, mad at the crowd. You know, when we're in lockdown, with it. He, he, here's why. No, do what? They kind of. I felt like they got bored with it. I don't think they got bored with it. I mean, we didn't. We didn't get to hear them for half the match because there was a commercial break going on. Fair, um, fair, okay. You no, know, here's here's what they do with the crowd during during the lockdown. We had Thunder Rosa on Dynamite. You had like all the extras and all the oh, spare talent. Thunder. To, yeah, na 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 na. Why isn't that chant happening? It needs to happen. We're gonna try and get it. And that's gonna be tough because Thunder Rosa is probably gonna be in the battle royal at uh, All Out, but. More Still, likely. that needs to be the chant. And if you any of AEW marks out there, do the ACDC Thunder Rosa. That needs to be the chant. So yeah. So if you're going to all out with us, let's get it going. I don't know where you're sitting, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So Thunder Rosa wins, um, but she actually That's wins fine. in a really cool way because honestly, Penelope Ford has been racking up some wins with her uh, like bridge STF Deathlock. Uh, yeah. The, the moot the Muta Deathlock. Um, but then she. Thunder Rosa was able to reverse it and like fall off to the side and do like a rear naked choke while she's in an FTF. It looks sick as hell. And the only reason that move was even possible is because literally Penelope Ford is arguably one of the most flexible people in the world because she's a former gymnast and cheerleader oh, yeah. type. So like it looked it looked like the most painful thing I've ever seen in my life. Um, so yeah, there you go. That was your women's match of the night, but it was it was a decent match. I just wish it didn't go through a commercial break. Wish I had a little more visible on regular TV. I'm all I'm yeah. saying. So the next two promos are pretty good. So you have Miro's promo. Miro says that you know he, he had a Brock uh, Anderson promo before that. Aren't oh. Arn Anderson's sons challenging Malachi Black next week because? He obviously doesn't watch TV. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's going to be a squash match. If it's not a squash match, I'd be completely surprised. I bet is, he literally is going to come to the ring, hit a black mass, and it's over. That's good, what I'm predicting. Good, good, good for you, kid. This is, how, this is how you get your ass handed to you in like two minutes. Yes. So after Miro, this, you have Miro. you have Miro's Miro's promo. Miro, you know he's you know he 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 will not he can't forgive uh, Fuego because Fuego didn't earn it because he took he took a, <laughs> uh, another he can't so he can't be redeemed. Um, but you know he, his God he 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 is uh, he loves his God in the day and he loves his smoking hot wife in the night. That's like, so good. Jesus, it's so it's good. So good. Um, but at the end, he basically calls out Eddie Kingston. So, yes, ooh, please. Give me some of that. Well, the everybody said, if you're going to do long-term booking for Miro, have him drop the TNT title in Queens at the Arthur Ashe Center in New York to Eddie Kingston. I hope this is the start of that because that makes all the sense in the world. You know, Kingston finally getting a big title from a big company, deservedly so. But in New York, I hope I hope it's the start of that. I really do. I hope so. I hope. We'll see. Yeah. Speaking of, of Eddie Kingston, if you have not had a chance to watch Ethan Ethan Page's vlog yet, it's worth it because he literally takes over the vlog and like he's just walking <laughs> around with uh um, oh, this past week Ethan he did Page. That? Yeah, he walks around with nice. Ethan Page's phone. Hey, I'm doing a vlog. You want you want in on this? You want in on this? He's like, I don't get these stupid vlog things. Like, I just yeah. don't get it. Like, get he's it. so funny. Like, totally. And, Ethan, and Ethan pronounces it vlog. Yeah, vlog. It's a is v-log. that a Canadian thing? I don't know. No, no. Like, he calls it a vlog and a vlog. And uh, he's been actually talking with Evil Uno because Evil Uno is getting ready to start a vlog. So yeah, like all these guys are like vlogging. Yeah. It's like I, I only well, have so plus many hours Eddie Kingston so does some commentary. He pops in occasionally on Dark and Elevation and Dark. 
him on him on commentary is glorious. It really is. I love me some Eddie Kingston. Maybe we get to see him at Journey Pro one day. Hmm? Oh hmm? God, that makes hmm? my heart happy. All right. Um, all right. So next, Mox is backstage. Moxley cuts a very, very, very pointed, very pointed promo about mm-hmm. how everybody wants to come to AEW, and he's like. He, he talks shit on everybody. Like, you know, yep. he talks about Hangman, hey, you know, this high school bullshit, Christian Cage, you know, he should, he should have stayed retired. Like, he just, just goes off on everybody. But he's like, you know, I, we need to talk about, you know, the top of the food chain around here. And if anybody wants to come here, they need to go through me, basically. So, originally, people, the betting odds, Vegas actually has betting odds on this shit, which cracks me up. <laughs> CM Punk's first opponent, betting wise, is Darby. Darby, Darby Darby's where it started. Yeah, Darby's where it started. But now this and the fact that John Moxley has a match on Rampage this Friday makes me think it's going to be him because I mean he's going against Daniel Garcia and he's probably just absolutely just he's going to murder him. Yeah, yeah. I've long said that I don't think knowing what. CM Punk has said for the past seven years. I don't see him coming back in his mind and immediately feuding with somebody like Darby Allen. No offense to Darby. I love him. I think he's one of the future linchpins of the company, right? Mm-hmm. CM Punk wants a headline, though. I don't know if that's a big enough headline. John Moxley is a big enough headline. Kenny Omega is a big enough headline. Yeah. No, I totally agree. But here's also another thing here. Uh, and and this is Mark Shadamas is going hard now. Okay, okay, let's hear I, it. I said Will Ospreay will yes. show up, and God, I, I that. now am convinced Will Ospreay is going to show up and face either Darby Allen or John Moxley. So you think that is, is you think the Giant Swerve? For those of you not familiar, after New Japan resurgence, when Real Osprey made his return, say he's medically cleared, blah blah blah, all this stuff, uh, he said that he's not going back to Japan. He's going to stay in strong, and then he made hard notes and references to possibly going showing up on Impact and AEW. FYI, uh, this was a show where Moxley was at. By the way, just saying, just saying. Yes. Um, so, so, but among Mox- others. Amongst it others, just, so so oh so yes, God. so that that's a setup. So 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 Mark Stradamus, go ahead and say what you promote. Re- reiterate for those who didn't hear last time. So I said that the ultimate swerve and the ultimate fu that AEW could do, but it would be in a good way, is have Will Osprey show up and not CM Punk because everybody and their mother is expecting CM Punk. And the best way to swerve that and just obviously you're gonna get viewers and yes, you might piss off a few people, but Will Ospreay is arguably the best wrestler in the world right now. Plain and simple. Right. When he's healthy. It, like it's, yeah. it's him and Okada. Him and Okada. Like they're the best. Like I don't care. I'll take the Pepsi challenge with any of you Roman Reigns lovers. He's amazing well, right now, but he's got a small skill set. Omega's up there with him too. Omega's ama- yeah, Omega, but Will Ospreay right now, I don't because he's yeah. he's young and he's in his prime. And my goodness. So I, I think the ultimate swerve is it's going to be Will Ospreay showing up on Rampage and not CM Punk. Or, to your point, yeah, I, I had to. I, I I compounded it. <laughs> yeah, both of them showing up like one right after the other. Like, like I compounded it. Said that. Well, originally I said, "How about we do that?" He does his match at at All Out, and during All Out, that's when CM Punk debuts. But then I was like, "No, no, no. How, how about this? It's Osprey. It's gonna be a squash match. Osprey comes out. They have a face to face, and maybe he even like or surprise attacks him, and he's he's leaving. That's when you hear in Living Color click kicks on." And out comes CM Punk. And that's your show. <laughs> yes. That'd be, I think, I like that idea the most. I yeah. read a thing today, too, that said that uh, Daniel Bryan really, 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 really wants a match against Will Ospreay. And I really, 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 really want to see it. Yep. I think that that to me now here's and the only other thing I'll say on this before we talk about the main event was everybody knows who CM Punk is. Even if you're a moderate wrestling fan, you pretty much have an idea about this guy, right? You've mm-hmm. you've seen him. If I was to put Will Ospreay on your TV, 
that's not the same thing. Everyone's like, well, that's a good looking guy. They don't. Yeah. He's not rec- face recognizable in America. He's so face only- recognizable in every other country. I know, I know. In England, he's a, he's damn near a god. He can walk. Well, excuse me. In Japan, he's damn near a god. In England, pretty much the same. You know. Yes, but America is America promotions and it's America things, right? America, America, America. So that's the only other thing. Just, I'm not saying yes or no. Just just throw that out there. And let it let it percolate. We'll see what happens on. We'll see what happens on Friday. It's going to be interesting, no matter what. So so, folks, I'm going to ask you now that I. Again, Mark Stradamus is his hit. <laughs> what do you think? Do you think it's definitely going to be CM Punk? Or do you think it's going to be Will Ospreay? Do you think it's going to be somebody completely different? Maybe it's going to be Brian Danielson. That would, be a, that would be a swerve right there. I, I, there is on high authority that somebody's going to show up Friday. Who is I mean, it? Who I mean, do you, you think don't... it is and why? If you can give me a yeah. why, that would be awesome. Put it in the comments below if you're on YouTube. Tweet at us at Total Spot Fest. Let us know who you think. I really want to hear from you guys on what you think because this is something. I mean, that something is is going to happen. You don't got to be not what everybody expects, and that's what I'm hoping. I think it might be, and I honestly am much more into the compound nature of this because, sorry, is not nothing happening. You don't get the United Center, which let's let's be completely honest here. As much as we love AEW, United Center is definitely them punching out of their weight class. Okay, mm-hmm. and they <laughs> for, sold the MF or out for arena size. You know that one is the, you know they're they're not packing you know the twenty thousand seat arenas. You know they're, like tonight's show, which had an electric feel in it. I will say that mm-hmm. about six thousand people, give or take, were there. You know, mm-hmm. and it's a great size. I think it's the perfect size to experience a wrestling show, personally, on a weekly show. But so you not you don't get the United Center with fifteen thousand people in, in attendance. You know, yeah, y- and all this build up and hype. You don't have all that to not have something big happen. So it's got to be something. What is it? Let us know. Give us a comment. Give us a tweet. We want to hear it. Yes. Plus reasonings. Yes, I I, I, I I need to know what you guys think. Right. I need about the main of yeah. <laughs> oh, ba- oh, okay. No, no, no. We're not. We're not singing. No, no, no. No, no Mark Antony. No Mark Antony. Let's do the main event. Then, uh, then I got I got a, an impossible game I want to play with you too. Okay. All right. So the fifth labor of Jericho. This is Chris oh. Jericho coming out to no music, and he is well. banned from using the <laughs> Judas effect. Yes. So he comes out. And the entire crowd sings Judas. And the great thing is people also had signs with the lyrics for the people who didn't know. And they showed like three or four people looking at their phone because they don't know the lyrics. Three or four. Oh, they showed a lot of people looking at their... They, there was actually people who were posting on Twitter and stuff like this, you know. It's like yeah. coordin- there's a, There was a social media coordination amongst those marks that were in attendance. And I love every second of it. Yeah, so well played, Marks. I'm with you. One love. All right, so then you have Maxwell G- Jacob Fried, my jerk off friend, whatever you want to call him, coming out with his ring solo. Yeah, I want to call this out solo, and he was solo the entire time. I mean, to me, this this was a this was an Adam Cole move because Adam Cole in Undisputed Era, yeah, see, they 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 had some shenanigans a lot of times, but for his biggest matches. Talk about Gargano. You're talking against uh, uh, Andrade. Um, his biggest matches, it was him by himself. And MJF, same thing. I love it. Good. So this match had tons. Tons. Oh, a lot. A lot um, of stuff. You know, Chris immediately went for the walls of Jericho. Um, I wish it would have been... <laughs> a lion tamer because he is the creator of the lion tamer at least in my opinion i know he wasn't the creator but he's the one who mastered it for me this match had everything there was a spot where chris actually had um mjf on the ropes a little bit he was dazed and he's getting ready to go for the judas effects he's like, oh shit i gotta stop and not do it and he doesn't um at that point mjf turns the tide he rips off um the elbow guard. Oh, he, just, he ripped the guard off early. That you're talking. Yeah, you're getting you're getting the spots sorry. mixed up. That was near sorry. the end. 
That was near yeah. the end. I'm sorry. Yeah, the, the so, Judas Effect attempt was near the end. So. so Sorry. So at one point, MJF rips off the elbow guard, and he is just working the elbow of Chris Jericho. Just working oh, the shit out of it. Two-thirds of the match. Out. Second two-thirds, two-thirds of the, of the match. match. It was a really good match. There's lots of counters. There's there was a lion salt in there. There is lots of good. You stuff. had a near lion fall after the lion salt, or lion oh, tamer yeah. after the lion. It was and close. Like he was right there. It, I'm like, just drop, just drop, just drop, and then like, turned it over, stepped over. I'm like, damn it. I don't think. Do you think he can do it? I mean, I hate to say it like sound like this, but he's he is in his fifties now, he and it does require some twisting to get there. So he, he did. He did to Cody. He did do it. Yes, he did do it to Cody. You're Granted, right. that was two years ago, but he did yeah. it to Cody. Yeah. So at this point, um, you know, MJF grabs his ring. He gets busted with his ring. Ref <laughs> Aubrey takes it. He, uh, Chris Jericho sm- uh, grabs his bat, smacks MJF in, in the stomach. And this is where he goes for the Judas. This Judas is effect. where I'm he sorry. attempts the Judas. This effect, is where yeah. he goes. He stops. Max hit, hits him with one of his own, though. The MJF I know. legit hits hits the juice effect, which I thought was kick ass. Total, Total heel move. move. And I'm I'm you know me. I'm here for it. So at that point, one, two, no, he actually sorry, he doesn't go for the cover. He goes right for the salt of the earth arm bar. Right. He goes right for it. Chris is a, like trying to escape, trying to escape, and then he, he just moves him into the middle of the ring. He readjusts him in the middle of the ring, just keeps cranking it. Chris Jericho, ladies and gentlemen, taps out, and he your was winner in, he was of the it for fifth a while too. labor is MJF. I cannot believe that's how they ended it. So it almost felt like somebody tweeted this, and I totally agree with it, and I want to get your thoughts on this. It kind of felt like the swan song for, him, for, for Jericho a little bit. It it had the vibe. Not I want to say a retirement match, but it had the vibe of a swan song sort of thing. Yes, put, put into consideration, Jericho has never beaten MJF. He's zero three against MJF, and that's crazy in and of itself. But I don't know. I mean, the match was the match was very good. It was well paced. That both of them they played wonderfully against each other. There's a spot there where MJF grabbed the camera and he did the the, the Jericho thing with the cameraman. Yeah. He's flipping off the whole crowd and that was awesome. And then he turns around and there's Jericho standing I'm like, oh shit, right? You know. So and he punches I mean, it like and he punches right into the, right the, into the, the lens. Great, yeah. and so I mean, it it felt that way. Yes, I think. I mean, we've long suspected Inner Circle doing separate things, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Proud and Powerful have been doing that. They're feuding with FTR, right, in their own manner. Um, Jake Hager hasn't really been seeing a lot. He's probably training for his next MMA fight, so what my guess is. You yeah. Know, Sammy is becoming a star on his own right, 1,000%. Mm-hmm. Eddie Guerrero, who, in, insert young star here. That's it, Sammy Guevara is is by far, you know, he's one, one of those pillars we always talk about for the future. But MJF is too. And this is the third time Jericho's put him over. And he it felt like a swan song. It really did. I know I know that um, Fozzie is supposed to go on the road here shortly, and that might be what's going on, and he's just kind of – Takes time you know, off. Doing Could that. be. Yeah. Maybe I I don't know, and I don't want to speculate on that, but it f- definitely feels like he's gonna be away for a hot minute. So then, who's the next feud with MJF? Who's the next setup? I think a lot of that depends on who's gonna be champion after All Out. But do you think they're gonna try to set something up for him in the next two weeks? To have a I, think in, all that. I think in the next two weeks, you'll see not a ton of MJF probably. It, you'll see him maybe in promos gloating about his victories and stuff. Yeah. And then after All Out, I could see that's where he kind of comes in full. Because remember, he's had what? One singles loss in his entire career in, in, in AEW? Yeah. He should be on the top of the, the rankings. I could see him. Here's, here's the truth of the matter. Here's a good direction to go since you have the uh, – I mean, you got at some point. You can't have the people that are in the inner circle and the people that are in the pinnacle feuding with each other in perpetuity, right? you got to have mm-hmm. some 
variance there. I think after All Out, you break off the, you're done with those for the time being. MJF got a sight set on the, the title. But who also has their sight set on the title is one Hangman Adam Page. There's your feud. Dark Order is there to back up Adam eventually because you'll have the pinnacle backing up him. It gives it gives them all a little it gives them all a new kind of reset. That's my guess. You know what I'd like to see? What would you like to see? Yes. MJF, CM Punk. Sure. I mean, the promos on that would be mind bending. <laughs> it would blow. It would just be face melting greatness. That's why I'm like, I just want the promos. I don't even want them to fight. I just. Want I mean, I mean, that's that's half the fun of this whole Jericho feud was the promo. Let's be honest; it's been fantastic. All right, what do you think of the show overall? Um, I so there was two amazing matches, a solid match, and some good promos, some good setup. There's some. There was a couple duds, but I'm not gonna hold those completely against it. I'm gonna give it a spot fest. Um, I will give it just barely a spot fest because yeah. I, I, I told you, it felt like two shows. It felt like the first half and then the last match, and then you had the middle bit. And unfortunately, in the middle of that, the one women's match, which was actually a pretty damn good match, got stuck in the middle of promo, promo, promo. I know they're setting up stuff. I know you got CM Punk and Rampage this Friday. You have All Out coming up. I get it. Mm-hmm. But I think the show, I think, I think they shifted like all the, all the good wrestling to the front. And then they did a bunch of promos, and they tried to interweave stuff, but it didn't. It just it felt like two different shows. So because of that, I'd give it a spot fest, just barely a spot fest for me. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. Barely. No, I'm right there with you because those two really good matches and a solid end ending match, that's what pushed it. Because if if the if you had one solid match and one great match, it'd been a squash. Like mm-hmm. that's where I was. Sure, sure. So Friday's rampage. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the official announced card. We have Jade Cargill with Mark Sterling, of course, versus Mm -hmm. Kira Hogan. We have Private Party with Matt Hardy going against Jurassic Express in the AEW World Tag Team Eliminator Tournament. Yep. Then we have Jon Moxley with Eddie Kingston versus Daniel Garcia with 2.0. So... That's confirmed to be the main event. That's confirmed to be the main event. So... Plus surprises. <laughs> See, that's why right there it, it is the betting is probably changed to Moxley right now. Um, if I if if I was a betting man, which I'm not, I would put I money on Moxley. You, I'm, you I'm playing, I know you are. I'm playing Poker Friday. I'm actually gonna have to watch it on my phone. I've already said like I'm gonna have it on my phone. I'm I'm it. the guy. Who, I'm the guy who goes to the casino. I'll take sixty bucks with me, and if I go above that sixty bucks in winnings, I cash out and I go to the bar. I'm done. <laughs> nice. I'm like up is up. I'm out. See ya. You know that's that's me. So anyway, nice. Well, let us know. Let us know what you guys think. And, and you said we want to know what you just thought on. You know, not just you know, but who you what do you think the surprise is? Do you? Th- are you are you convinced it's going to be CM Punk, which it probably is? Is it going to be a double? Is Osprey going to be involved? Is they going to have a triple? Are they going to pull out that? Are they going to pull out six people? Who I mean, I don't even know who. <laughs> you know, Bull Club Invasion. Who knows? I mean, what the, what the fuck could it be? Let us know. Give us a comment. Give us a tweet. Don't 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 tempt me. I know, I know. I I just I just tickled it there real fast. So all right, let's do this real quick. Okay, so cage match, which is the. Take out, take out the uh, um, um, the War Games match or Blood and Guts, right? This will be the third cage match that I can remember in AEW history. Is that right? Maybe fourth. I can only think of Wardlow versus Cody. Wasn't there another cage match? Uh-uh. So Blood and Guts was the second cage match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, even if there was another one that we can't think of, so we think this, this will either be the second full or the third full cage match. In yeah, AEW this is history. this is the second coin cage match because Blood and Guts had the top on it. I believe I believe that's correct, but something in my my soul is telling me there might be another one we're missing. I don't know, but I don't uh, think so. if we're wrong, somebody tell us. But we're pretty sure it's the second one. So anyway, we're gonna get to we're gonna get to see that at all out, and so is anybody else who's going to be there at all out. Everyone's gonna get to see it. Everyone's gonna watch it. Sarah Miedo, yes, we definitely agree that. 
Now, I love me a cage match. I loved them back when it was the old big gapped blue steel cage, you mm-hmm. know? Because mm-hmm. <laughs> those I guys don't know d- how to climb fences. I know. I exactly. Exactly. And I and part of me part of my heart broke when they moved to Chain Link. I was like, aw. Um, but the cage match is just the start because cage match then spawned hell in a cell and the elimination chamber six sides of steel lethal lockdown which is a play on of war games which is you know another one and blood and guts and on and on and on and that just was you know because steel it ba- that used that was like the it is the quintessential right you'd have match 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 and then steel cage match like oh my god and then of course extreme stuff happened in the nineties you know hit table ladders chairs tables or ladders mats you know table ladders chairs you had all sorts of crazy stuff that started going on this and that so here's the impossible game I want to play with you we're not going to do uh, feud faction or fired we're not going to do the, the the island game okay we're going to do lover or lever but with matches. So love it oh. or lose it. So it's going to okay. be uh, one cage, one, one, one of these uh, stipulation matches. So any sort of like, you know, this is, I don't even know how to, exp- you know, but a stipulation match like this. So gimmick you know, match. Ca- Gimmicks. That's the word I'm looking for. Thank you. I couldn't think mm-hmm. of it. What, so it's going to be gimmick matches. So there's one gimmick match where you will get to see it every pay per view for the rest of your life, right? This is, this is your favorite. This is the one, right? Okay. And then, and then you have to have one. And you have to put it in there that gets Thanos from existence. I like doing the Thanos bit, which means every iteration, every match has happened for that particular gimmick never happened. Okay. So it has repercussions depending on which matches it is if you wipe it out. So if you say, I want to wipe out every hell in the cell, well, that takes away a lot of bad, but a lot of good, you know. So anyway, one that you get to see at every pay-per-view for the rest of your life and one that is Thanos out of existence. Love it. Leave it. Just two, right? So it's two. So it's one that's the one that's there every time. Okay. I love it. And then you have one that's a leave it, which is the one that gets Thanos out of existence. Okay. Start with the start with the love it. Ladder match. Dude, you're doing a straight ladder match. Straight ladder match, not TLC. Which I know it could be it could be two match. or two or ten or twenty people, but uh, exactly not, not, not a TLC. A ladder match. Ladder match. Love me a ladder match. I'm okay. A homer for it. I mean, I was gonna say ladder match. <laughs> It's my favorite, man. Well, who's my favorite it's wrestler? Shawn Michaels, the man who basically <laughs> invented or brought mainstream ladder. If he didn't invent, I, you know. Yeah, yeah. They were there in the first credited ladder match, basically of all time. Yeah, insane, right? Like, <clears throat> um, it's, that's it's, my number one. I mean, it's it's hard to beat just the ladder match. Tables, ladders, and chairs is great because it's. I mean, but at the end of the day, a la- all, a lot of these extreme matches, there's no rules anywhere. There's no disqualifications. So it doesn't matter what the match is. It has anything to go along with it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to take it up and do so, do a variation thereof. So I've waxed poetically about this style of match. And because it's very... I know where you're going. Uh, you, know, you know exactly where I'm going. Because it's very... Um, um, Program specific. That's not the right words I'm looking for. It's very um, brand specific. Brand specific. I promotion JJ can't specific promotion, promotion specific. specific. JJ can't talk today if you don't remember from the beginning of the show. JJ, I don't know why. It is Ultimate X. Yes, I would say because that's that's ladder match taken up a notch. Flippy spinning mm-hmm. shit left and right, and it is. I mean, some of my favorite matches when I was getting into TNA, seeing AJ Styles and Frankie Kazarian and you know, Christopher Daniels, Samoa Joe, Petey Williams, Chris Saban, Suicide. Oh, so good. Yeah, Suicide. I mean, uh, which, side note, Suicide was in last, uh, last week's Battle Royal on Impact. I don't know who plays Suicide now, but it, it was not. It was some not random the, guy, it, number six. It's not the same Suicide that I remember. I'll put it that way. Yeah, yeah. So that is the love it. That, those are the ones that we will see on our paper, our fancy book pay per views every month, quarter, whenever we have them. Okay. Ultimate next for JJ. Ladder match for Jamie. What's one that never existed for you? That There's a ton been, of bad ones. <clears throat> there are. A ton There's a of bad lot ones. of bad gimmicks out there. 
I but mean, one you get to be erased. You get to clean up one for all eternity. Which one is that? I mean, <coughs> there's so many bad ones, like Braun Panty match. God, that, I'd be okay if that thing never existed. I don't think it'll ever come back anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is not a, this is post me too. I don't think you're going to see a Braun Panty match. Um, I know you love bull rope matches. Oh God, <laughs> <laughs> paddle on a pole match. Like Jesus, paddle there's so many pole. bad oh, ones. Yeah. Um, all right, so I will go with a more mainstream one that we've seen a few more times. The Buried Alive matches. I hate them. Now, does that include... Okay, so Buried Alive. You're talking about literally in dirt, or are you talking about... Not talking casket of, match. Okay, because I'm, I'm like, alive. that could... Okay. Buried Alive. That's the one where you have to get thrown in uh, dirt. Thrown, thrown into, a, into an open uh, grave and buried alive. Right. Yes. Those are... The Undertaker matches and like those uh, are well, Undertaker being ninety nine point nine nine percent retired. I don't consider him fully retired as long as they're still doing Saudi Arabia shows, because I know Vince is going to knock on that door. I know he will, which is yeah, you want, fucking you stupid. Want, Let you, you want thirty million? <laughs> yeah, which I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say no to that if I was him, but you, you know, in part, just, just let the man be. Let him enjoy his time with his wife. Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Well, that's interesting because that's. Okay, I thought you're gonna take a bigger swing than that. No offense, but you know, because it's like that. You don't see them too often, but they definitely do poke their ugly head every now and then, especially when you're talking about WWE. So, mm-hmm. buried alive was never a thing. It's p- gone, never I, happened. And I'm better for it. All right, so uh, you know, I was gonna go with like bull rope or stuff, but then it's like, I mean, that's that's still it, pretty good, but. That's that's fodder. Like it's the easy stuff, you know. Like it it, it is. And the thing is, that there were there are some good bull rope matches. Mm-hmm. Some of the old school ones, you know. That's the thing when you're doing like a longer outstanding gimmick, you lose some of the history behind that. You know, if you're like, well, I just want to get rid of the steel cage match, and it's like you're getting rid of some like classic ass matches if you do that. Oh so, yeah. I don't. I don't want to necessarily take take the easy, you know, the low hanging fruit, if you would. Um, what I would remove, and you tell me if this to me this is a gimmick match. You let me know. But okay. the the blank or you're fired match, which means that if the person loses, they lose their job. I'm <sighs> I'm over those. I think that's, that's a gimmick. That's a gimmick match. Okay, so I would because I just. I think I think it's lazy writing, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I just don't like it. And half the time it doesn't fucking matter anyway, right? Yeah, because they're back in six months after yeah. they heal up from injury. See Sonia Deville, okay? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and countless a. examples. I mean, yes, and and yes, that does mean that the feast or fired match from TNA is included in that, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Um, because that was actually a decent take on it. There's four cases in the corner, and you had a bunch of people there. Like eight people were in the match, right? Everybody's going for a case. In one case was a tag championship title shot. In another case was a X division. In another case was a world title shot. And the fourth one is a fired. You're f- a pink slip. And it could be any. So, unfortunately, that one was a good, the best variation I would say thereof. But no, mm-hmm. no, the 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 blank or your fired match is gone, out of existence. Yeah. So if you want me, if, if you want me to take a bigger swing, I know one that I don't. I can All I right, can give me, love give, me, really, give me okay. give me one that you don't really care for. Okay, cinematic. Really. They're okay. The final de- final deletion was the best, and you can't get any better than that. And ever since then, I feel like they've just fallen. Other than the Sting Darby Allen one, that was actually re- pretty decent. Oh, what but about for the what? most part? I just lose them. Stadium Stampede. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Okay, I love Stadium Stampede. I do too, but it's one of those things like and that counts. That's that'd be gone. So if it's I mean, cinematic, if, if, you know, if, if is that, that's a bigger swing, and if you were to do that. I mean, you would wipe out final deletion, all the deletions, and everything else. Yeah. Ugh. But but then well, I also a... f- wipe out the Bray Wyatt and Braun. You Shaman also wipe well. out. You wipe out most of the crap, and you also wipe out the Firefly Funhouse match. Yeah. So. Like, I mean, that's the thing. Like, I could go you that could, big. Well, you, you know. could. And my thing is, like, one of the ones that I would actually, I would want to get rid of, except for its history, would be the Hell in the Cell, because. Now, I know that includes, you know, 
mankind, Mick Foley almost dying, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is uh, unfortunate because that match was just unbelievable. And then he got back in, and then he got choke slammed from twenty feet up and almost died again. And then it's just you know, but for the most part, the Hell in the Cell match is completely unnecessary in the ethos. Yeah, no, I agree. It's a bigger what, cage match. One okay, now, now now you're getting me going because like one I would like <laughs> to see more often nowadays that I I love, and it's arguably because it's my favorite move. But I would love to see a lot more submission matches. I used to love those when I was younger, like Chris Benoit mm. and um, Eddie Guerrero were in a submission match, or, or D Malenko and that there it is. D Malenko, Chris Jericho had a submission match. Like WCW had them all over the place. They WWE did. only had them a couple times, but man, they are so damn good. Because there's just, nothing better to me. Like even watching UFC and shit like that. Seeing you are physically making somebody say, "I can't do this anymore. I tap yeah, out." No, it's I so get much it. better I knocking get it. out somebody. I get it. I don't think you see them though anymore because it's it doesn't fit our short atten- attention span culture as well. Because mm-hmm. it's it's a it's a technical match, so a you're not gonna see in WWE period, right? For that matter, because um, it requires wrestling skills. <laughs> That's such a dig. Uh, I don't know, but they got the right. skills; they're just not allowed to use them. They have to do it I the mean, WWE way. I mean, I think yeah, we haven't really seen a. I don't remember the last time there was a submission match that I remember call seeing. It's been, I, a, it's been a long time. Yeah, I I don't remember. All right, well, that was my take on it. So I figured, let's do let's do some gimmick stuff here. So we could go on about this. There's a shit ton of great gimmicks, and there's a lot of terrible gimmicks out there. <laughs> I mean, some gimmicks have just been horrendous. Let's be honest. Some of these gimmick matches are just bad. Uh, like the, how about the, and I, I'm, I'm making broad strokes here, but the, you know, you have to, your, your opponent gets embarrassed by wearing a, some sort of weird costume after the match is over match oh those are terrible yeah there's so many bad ones first blood matches burned alive blank on Uh, a pole blank on a pole period (laughs) anything on a pole it's like oh come on really and if you get to it this person gets to you oh what's the come on just flip a coin and just get it over with you know whatever so you guys let us know you want to play the game give us a comment give us a shout what what is your favorite Gimmick match, the match you would have at every pay per view you fancy book for the rest of your life. What ma- What gimmick match, this is what I really want to hear, would you eliminate from existence? Let's hear that. So, give us a comment, give us a tweet. We will be back on Tuesday. So, uh, Tuesday we'll be back to go over what the hell happens at Rampage this Friday. Uh, we've also got uh, action packed. Even more so, weekend of wrestling. So Friday night is Impact's emergence pay-per-view, mini pay-per-view, as I'm calling it, along mm-hmm. with Rampage. Then you've got SummerSlam on f- Saturday, TakeOver on Sunday. Um, we are definitely doing our picks for TakeOver and for SummerSlam. We have belts that we defend. Even if we don't watch the product anymore, we still got to defend these damn belts. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's a vacant them- one since... since uh, Bruce this Pritchard young fired young boy. Is this young boy go bye bye? Uh, yeah, and we cannot let Megan the Tyrant hold all the gold. We cannot. So I'm gonna be doing everything in my damn power to make sure that doesn't happen. So uh, check in with us on Tuesday. We'll give you the results of both of our uh, pay per view updates and see where we're at. Who has the gold? Do me and Jamie finally get a little icon in that blank space under our name? That's what it's there for to put our championships in this little like game that we play. Mm-hmm. But Jamie's daughter freaking has all the belts. So yep. <laughs> I mean, she she took my last one clean. She took yours clean. Kind of. I had, I had mine for a week, and it, it was still being contested. But I, out of default, I assumed it, and then she, she snatched it from me on secondary tiebreaker. So, so I'm, I'm thinking for the, time, the tiebreaker this time. I think this would different? be fun. Do, yes, but not. But no. So as we know, the, the, the two out of three falls, they're going to go all three falls. Like We already know this. Like, right. Is this going to happen? I think we should do total time between all three matches. Ooh. And That's not good. just the final one. So in between first bell and third bell. Yeah. Like, 
we stop the clock after the first fall because oh my god that's well, gonna no, be the, that's well, gonna no, be, no, no, because they go time. right into it, right? Because they go right into the next. They go fall, right, right? They more or break. less, more or less. Yeah. That's what it'd be even better. So you do it from the time the first bell rings, and then the last bell, third bell rings. Yeah. Oh, we'll, we'll probably do that, and we'll have a tiebreaker for SummerSlam as well. So check in with us on Tuesday. We'll give you results of that. We're also going to break down everything that happens this Friday on Rampage. Uh, talk about what happened. Men- make mention of Emergence for Impact, and then if you do want tickets, uh, like I said, we're probably gonna we're gonna give it through the weekend here. Uh, so if you want to get tickets, list price. We're not we're not we're not fuck, we're not jacking with the price or anything. So just same old price, twenty five bucks a piece. We got two tickets. Weekend of Journeys. It's Saturday the twenty eighth at one p.m. over at Lemonade Park in Kansas City, over by Kemper Arena. Give us a, give us a DM on Twitter at Total Spot Fest. Let us know you're interested. If we don't hear anything by Monday evening, we're going to reach out to Walter and DJ, and we'll figure something else out. But. Yep. Please let us know. We're, we, we, we want somebody who wants to be there to be there. So give us a shout. Let us know. We got your tickets. Yep. That's what we got. We will have. We will see you next week. Um, Jamie, take us home. All right, ladies and gentlemen. If you're not down with Total Spot Fest, I got five words for you. Got two tickets to paradise. Uh, Well, pack your bags, folks. It'll be all right. We'll see you next time, guys. Peace.